Hello everybody, this is God's Girl G and thank you for joining me today. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please do so. Hit that subscribe button and then also hit the notification bell that comes up after you hit the subscribe button. That way you'll be notified of any videos that I upload which are done on a weekly basis. So before we get into today's video, I wanna remind you also to hit the thumbs up button if there is something that I am saying that's resonating with you. And also comment below. I love reading your responses to the videos. So let's get into today's discussion. So today I'm talking about self-care. Why? Well, if you viewed any of my videos, uh, one, two, or more, you will see that an underlying theme of a lot of my videos has to deal with relationships. As my opening indicated, the most powerful relationship that you will have will be the one that you have with yourself on this earth. And many times we neglect ourself, our self-esteem, and our overall well-being for the sake of what we call doing the will of God. So before some of y'all come for me, cause I know you will. I wanna point out some misconceptions that we have about self-care in Christendom. If you've been in church at any point in time in your life and you've participated in ministry, there is seemingly an undercurrent of feeling guilty about self-care like it's being selfish and it's completely unnecessary in Christendom. And in particular, with our walk with God, we can make the mistake of zoning in on self-denial and we can think that self-care is not important to God. We have been taught in some religious sects that God doesn't like it when we set limits or boundaries or when we choose to take a break or take time to strengthen and heal. Because after all, setting boundaries feels so selfish when God does so much for me. But self-care isn't about self-indulgence. It's about refreshing and renewing our mind, body, and spirit. And so before some of y'all come for me again, I'm gonna give you some Bible. <laughs> I got you, I'm gonna give you some Bible today because self-care is that important. Mark 12, 31 says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Some of us are loving our neighbor more than we are loving ourselves. More Bible. There's a story in 1 Kings chapter 19, verses one through eight, about one of my favorite Bible characters, Elijah. The first Elijah, not, not Elisha. Just, you know, some of y'all get that straight. Elijah in 1 Kings was in a place of despair. He was facing depression and loneliness. And I love it because the angel of the Lord tells in verse seven, get up and eat to, cause the journey's too much for you. God doesn't neglect Elijah's needs, even though he has a broader perspective of the situation. So there's your Bible. So what is self-care? There's so many definitions out there and self-care has, especially in YouTube-dom, YouTube world, YouTube universe, it has a very um, warped or different version of self-care because self-care is more than just doing a facial manicure and pedicure, I'm just saying. So here's the true definition, at least the one that I'm going to give for the topic of discussion today. Self-care is any action or behavior that benefits us by improving our self-esteem and overall well-being. Self-care also means that you continue to do the things that are important to you. Self-care is just one fraction of the broader concept of self-love. Now, self-love includes, but it's not limited to, recognizing your self-worth, being kind toward yourself, and fostering your self-growth throughout the course of your life. So listen, self-care helps us maintain an inner peace and a balance in an increasingly demanding and overstimulating world. And I wanna give you three reasons why self-care is really important. Because it improves your mental health, your physical health, and it keeps you connected to the spirit. 
So for some of us, we can be so out of touch with our own needs. I thought it important to identify some signs that you in need of some self-care. And let's face it, self-care, it is easier said than done because it is really unique to the individual. So what I deem self-care will be different than what you deem as self-care. Additionally, self-care is not a one and done process. It is ongoing and something that you really need to schedule or pencil in to your daily life. So here are some signs that you're neglecting self-care. You are skipping or neglecting your overall basic needs. Getting enough sleep, exercising, and eating healthy are three big rocks of your overall basic needs. And neglecting any of those three areas is a sign that you are neglecting your overall basic needs. So on a day-to-day -day basis, you might not see a problem with not getting enough sleep, skipping breakfast because you're running late, and not exercising because you're just too tired. But when you do this habitually, your body is going to start missing the sleep and vital nutrients that you need to keep you energized and focused and operating at your best on a daily basis. And sadly, even if you have been sacrificing any of these three areas for sake of your job as an example, the only thing that your boss will notice is a decrease in your job performance. So keep up with these basic needs so you can attend to the things that require a higher level of focus. Sign two, you're always on autopilot. When each and every day is so exhausting that all you can do is simply go through the motions, you're not living, you're just existing. You must sit back and fulfill your emotional needs. It is important to spend time in deep thought. It's important to experience the world around you instead of letting it pass you by. Sign three, you're always doing something for someone else except yourself. Of course, it is a blessing to serve and to give to others. There's nothing wrong with that. However, giving too much of yourself will eventually lead to others taking advantage of you and you feeling completely depleted. When people see you willing to bend over backwards for them, they will test the limits to see how far you're willing to go before you just snap. The worst part is, since you're so willing to give of yourself, you won't even realize they're taking advantage of you until you're so invested in their needs, you feel you can't back out. Sign number four, you can't remember the last time you had fun. If you can't remember the last time that you had fun and giggled and did something that brought you joy, this is a clear sign. You need some self-care. Sign five, you don't feel like yourself anymore. When you neglect the importance of self-care, it can lead you to truly forgetting who you are. When you don't know why you're getting out of bed in the morning, when you go through your day looking forward to only sitcom reruns in the evening, and then when you get home, you can't enjoy the sitcom reruns because you're thinking about the next day, which will be more of the same, that's a sign. It's important to take time for yourself. Figure out what you need to do to get back on track so that you can start feeling like yourself again. Next, I wanna talk about how to get together your own self-care routine. It starts by putting yourself at the top of your to-do list. For example, you are so good at penciling everybody else in on your calendar, you need to pencil yourself in on your own calendar. Things like exercising, getting to bed at a decent time, setting aside time, to plan for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the next day or the week in advance is part of that first step in creating your self-care routine. It is important that the activities and the routines that you plan into your schedule feed your overall well-being and that it's not detrimental to others in your life. And listen, don't think about what others are gonna say. Self-care is meant to be selfish. It's self-care. You can only be your best for others when you are first your best self. The goal here is just to get started on something. You gotta have a, you've gotta have a plan. Every baby step that you make will help along the way. Listen, self-care should not be a chore. More self-care equals 
more awareness, which equals to more self-love, which will have a ripple effect onto others that you interact with every day in the form of compassion, gratitude, and more authentic kindness. Thank you for joining me today. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. Bye.